video, quick status check and update on the rest of my mounts. Not that many to go through, but you know, things are happening, thank goodness. They have come through the winter to some degree. And I had Lida Shepherd also ask me for an update on my popcorn Haruri that she watched a video and wanted to know what it looks like now. There are some things I need to talk about with that one, seeing as it's doing a little bit poorly. But first of all, let me update you on my Brassavola flagellaris. Kicking it, absolutely doing fabulously, thank goodness. And it's starting on several new growths. From what I can see, there's at least four, which is great. It was really strange during the cold month of March. One of the eyes already started swelling. That was a response to the longer day length, but that eye didn't progress at all, seeing as it was way too dark and cold for it. Still, it is catching up now and is starting with three others, and we are officially in active growth. This is Brassavola perinii. This was a stick of an orchid. In 2020, it almost landed in the compost pile. <laughs> there was absolutely nothing on this orchid, no leaves, no nothing. And I thought seeing as I was testing out these inorganic mounts in 2020 is when I started with them. I thought it's not gonna hurt to put this one on a mount and see what it does. And well, lo and behold, it's my zombie Brassavola perinii. Come back from the dead. It is starting on a root. Yes, one single root is what I can identify, but I can see at least two eyes swelling on this one, which is great. We are still in business. This would be a revival of something I have never seen in my collection when it comes to Brassavolas. It would be the miracle of miracles because once I only have a little bit of a rhizome left on any Brassavola in my collection, it usually also ends up on the compost pile. But we've got perinii in active growth with root growth. <laughs> Let's see what it does for the rest of the season. My little itty bitty rescue piece of how we are a lava burst <laughs> on a scrubby pad. Also, this inorganic mount concept co continues. I don't have any active growth at this point in time, but goodness me, it's alive. There are a couple of new roots starting, but you know, it's not really its time yet. It's also been a little bit too cold for it. Still, can you believe it? I still have how we are a lava burst and well, as you can judge by the size of the mount, I, I am thinking positively that we will be seeing a little bit more foliage and growths on this one, seeing as, yeah, look at the size of the mount. <laughs> Tolumnia hoxonia. A beautiful gift from Anna Reiter. Thank you so much. I want to show you how she's doing. Check this out. Yes, I also have high hopes for this one, seeing as I lost my first Tolumnia Scandens. She was set in the classic Tolumnia setup that I have, basket with lava rock, and she did quite well for me for a season, bloomed and everything, and then poof, just frazzled on me because I could not keep up with the watering. You can see the long rhizomes that these species Tolumnias produce. They like a high humidity, which I don't have. So enter inorganic mount with hob filter material. Lots and lots of humidity buffer in that material, holds on to the water really well, but still allows a lot of aeration around the roots. And I'm getting a little bit of a fan explosion. It wouldn't be the first time, but now I'm getting an explosion because other little fans had grown during the winter and hadn't really amounted to much. And then of course, being very, very careful with the watering because this orchid literally just gets misted. I can't exactly go all ninja on them because otherwise I will risk rotting the little fans. But we've pulled it through the winter and now you can see even more fans coming out with their itty bitty, tiny, teeny weeny little roots. I am so thrilled about this orchid, I cannot tell you. It is always so wonderful to receive orchid gifts. The responsibility, however, shoots exponentially in making them live, survive and thrive, especially because of the fact that it is a gift. So I'm so pleased to be able to update on the fact that Hoxonia is still doing well and lots and lots of new growth. I am hoping now to be able to guide the roots into the hob material, then I don't have to be so radical with the watering. Look at this. Here comes a new little fan. First the rhizome grows, but it's already producing a root. 
If push comes to shove, what I'm going to do is take some fishing line and pin some of the rhizome a little bit closer to the hob material so that the new roots can actually get into it without the wind blowing the rhizome away, causing an abrasion on my little green root tips and causing the roots to fail. But yeah, Anna Reiter, look at this. <laughs> cool, huh? <laughs> Lida Shepherd, here is my popcorn Haruri. Shocker, right? Yep. The difference between last year from that video and now is a shocker. It scared me for the longest time. And let me tell you what happened here before I show you some of the recovery. It was super cold during February and March. It was super dark. We had the coldest spring ever recorded in Spain. I'm not saying that this orchid wouldn't have been able to tolerate the 14 degrees that I had in my grow space over that period of time. But what happened was because it was so cold, I switched on a gas heater and I thought my orchids would be fine because where I'm sat with a gas heater they are somewhat far away but close if you know what I mean and well the fumes of that gas heater clearly had a negative effect on this orchid specifically I cannot see any damage on the other ones but this one here had a lot of growths in the middle and also right here that started to push out spikes during the time frame of January, February. And I was like, whoa, my popcorn Haruri is going to bloom. So I had three spikes developing on this orchid during the months of the year, totally unexpected. What I didn't realize was that these were stress spikes. The orchid was already heading downhill. I couldn't see it on the foliage just yet. The orchid though knows best she needed to propagate herself, bloom as fast as possible to get pollinated and save herself somehow. Only at a later stage did I recognize, as you can see here, yellowing of the leaves. I wonder if it'll pop off. Yep, you see? This is still remnants from the gas, the fumes, the damage of the heater that I used. And all the growths that were here, they pretty much died back. As you can see, this little pseudobulb is shriveling, but it has a spike. Pathetic, pathetic blooming. Still, I thought, well, that's it for my popcorn Haruri. There is nothing I can do about it. My circumstances are such I couldn't do anything about it. Once the poison was in the plant, so to speak, the stomata opening at night, and that is, of course, when I was using a gas heater. Well, the damage is done. How much more is she going to decline? Uh, she's starting on some new growths. I just saw one this morning right here. That's great, so happy to see that. She's got a new growth that didn't fail right here. Oh, I'm relieved, relieved to see that. She is trying to grow some roots on that little growth. I'm not sure if that's gonna make it, but she has two growths right underneath here. There's one that's maturing, at least it's trying, struggling a little bit but a brand new growth that is a little bit fresher and looks a bit better. Yep, that one is my future hope for at least this piece because the orchid split apart when I took her out of the pot. So, oof, we are on a knife's edge with this one and one could now say I shouldn't have let her bloom, but I wanted to see, <laughs> curiosity, I wanted to see what blooms would look like if they were to come out at a time and because of stress and you can see that actually there is really nothing to see here. That little growth is gonna go, I can cut it away. So note to self, you can freeze your butt off, protect your orchids for the winter of 22 and 23. The gas heater was a pricey investment and risking the health of the orchids was then not part of the equation anymore. Once I realized what was happening here and I started to understand the dynamic, even me lowering the orchid lower so that she's not as high as she would have hung normally, it was just too late. And then having seen the repercussions of this orchid, I was not using the gas heater anymore. I preferred to be cold so that my orchids would survive. <laughs> the things we do. <laughs> so this is how they're hanging at the moment at the edge of the hedge. They're getting intermittent rain. They are in bright, bright shade. I'm taking advantage of the reflection of the white facade so that they don't burn into a crisp. But soon enough, they will be moving into my south-facing covered portico. 
where they will continue to have bright shade and not be exposed to direct sun. I hope that this update was of interest. Thank you for asking about the popcorn Haruri leader, Shepard. I appreciate your interest. And Anna Raita, I hope that you are pleased with the results so far of the Tulumnia Hocusonia. Thank you so much for your time, for being here, for watching my video. I so appreciate it. Have yourselves a beautiful day on one condition, please, that you stay safe. Take care. Bye.